I wish I had learned this truth many years ago. Be thankful for the days, good and bad. All right, welcome to another episode of Warrior vs. Zombie. And I'm so excited today to introduce another warrior to you, somebody that I've just gotten to know in the Be Connected community not too long ago. Uh, but after talking to her a little bit, I feel like I've known her forever. And so we'll talk about Heshi Siegel here in a minute. But before we do, I want to make sure for those of you joining us for the first time or maybe somebody needs a reminder, I want you to understand what Warrior vs. Zombie is all about. Success is a journey. It's not a destination. As warriors, we all have a history of ups and downs, wins and losses that all are part of making us who we are today and provide a foundation for our path forward. We all battle our inner zombie as well as those zombies in our world. In each episode, I interview warriors who are aspiring leaders from all walks of life, entrepreneurs, artists, health practitioners, business owners, literally any inspired leader that has a story to tell. These warriors have a cause, they have unique value, and visions that go generations into the future, and today's guest is no exception. Heshi Siegel is an amazing warrior. She's a speaker, a trainer, an author, a blogger, a world traveler, and a passionate children's and environmental advocate. Heshi is the founder of A Kid's Better World nonprofit and CEO and founder of the Jet Netting Connection. She is a leader in networking and the network marketing industry. Her warrior journey has her overcoming many zombies, starting with an abusive childhood and the isolation of trying to do everything on her own. She's an author of a mini book, Blink, You're Judged, How to Create a Powerful, Positive First Impression. And her first business, The Embroidery Stop, grew 100 times in her first year and 300 times in year three, which opened the door to create award-winning designs, teaching on cruise ships, global organizations, and bringing embroidery back to the U.S., schools and hospitals. Her love for children permeates everything she does, inspiring her current focus on kidsbetterworld.com and special water purification systems. So, Heshi Siegel, welcome to Warrior vs. Zombie. How are you today? Well, after listening to that introduction, I'm just thinking about life and all the zombies I've gone through and how I've come out of them because... It's really great to come out on the other side. We're going to talk about that in the, in the first segment. I'm, I really do want to hear your story. And one of the things that uh, as we go through here, our warriors are always, it's funny because that part of the of the of each episode is kind of one of the things that most of the warriors are inspired by because uh, as entrepreneurs, uh, artists, it doesn't matter where you are in your warrior journey, often you feel like you might be alone or you're the only one going through something. And one of the things that's an encouragement is people say, wow, she made it through that um, and she's still standing. I can do it too. And so that's always a beautiful thing. So interestingly enough, in Texas here, I'm not in the, I'm in the, in Dallas area and we're, we've kind of didn't get, we got a little bit of rain, but it's pretty dry. But, you know, the coastal areas had the hurricane and it all kind of moved up the East Coast. And as we were getting ready for this episode, we were dealing with some technical challenges there because uh, something going on over in uh, your neck of the woods. So tell me a little bit about what, what, are your deal, what you're dealing with today. Well, last night I was worried I wouldn't even be here today. We got tornado warnings and hurricane warnings and flash flood warnings, I would say about every 90 seconds. And I was trying to do another show last night and that didn't work real well. So there's destruction all around me. I have been through floods in both of my homes. I've lost hundreds of thousands of dollars um, just in inventory and other things that I do. and. It has not been easy, and I was just praying that today would work because as I was watching the news this morning, I didn't even know how bad my area was. So 20 minutes from me, an hour from me, 45 minutes, it's all over the place. And you know what? The sun is shining today. <laughs> and there's maybe a rainbow. It's a beautiful thing. You know, the thing. Yeah. The 
the challenges we go through. And uh, so I'm, I feel especially blessed and I'm glad you pray. You're praying because I believe God answers prayer. And so I'm glad that he answered the prayer and you're here today and, and we're live and we're able to do this. So that's, that's a beautiful thing. Well, you, let's do this, Heshi. I want to make sure I know we both have a lot of story to tell. And, and when I did my own episode a few episodes back, I only got into a couple of the zombies and a few things. And, and there's a lot more to tell. And I'm sure when we get done with this, people are going to want to hear a lot more of, of the story that you have. But let's take a quick break. I want to, I want to uh, let the audience, the listening audience hear a little bit of more of Ricky Jean Wright and our theme song, which is It's Not the Getting There. And we'll be right back to hear your story and how you got to here today beyond the challenges in the immediate day. And uh, we'll be back with Warrior vs. Zombie and Heshi Siegel. But the miles become the teacher While the student learns real slow Traveling blind most of the time Wherever you go It's not the getting there It's the journey every day It's not a race All right, we're back. And that was a nice check-in. It's I feel blessed that we're even here recording this episode today and, and live with you in the hive on Be Connected because, uh, as Heshi just said, there's a major storms, major things moving through her neck of the woods. And I, I saw on the news today in New York, of course, New York is always obsessed with New York, so mo- that's where most of the news comes from, that they shut down the uh, subways and all this other stuff. So the world centers around our coasts sometimes, but uh, Heshi's dealing with some things as well. And so, Heshi, this is your story. I want to hear how you got to where you are today. And when we get to where we are today, then we'll take a break and we'll talk about what you're going to do. So share with us a little bit about your story. Okay. You know what? You have permission to just stop me at some point because this story has lots and lots of zombies. Um, I guess it started when I was little. I was the family toy by the time I was six years old, which I didn't know at the time was going to totally affect the rest of my life. And when my father died, um, it was a good thing for me because it's when life began. And my mom said, there's no money to go to college. And it was just when I was applying and I said, excuse me, there's no money. There's there's going to be a way. I am going to get to college. I went knocking on doors, $100 here, $200 there, four or $500. Not like it, what it costs today because you know, I was born a little while ago. <laughs> and um, I got to college, complete scholarships, loans, grants, you name it. I was working 40 hours a week while taking 17 credits. So I didn't have much time for a, a joyous, reveling uh, college life, but I got through, I loved it. I started working, not really in what I had majored in. And I just, I went on from one thing to the next. I became an avid volunteer. I love the community. I loved helping people. I worked as an early childhood education teacher as a substitute, as a Hebraic studies major. I was teaching that. I, I, I always taught kids and I always was there to help people. And I don't know, I guess because my father died when I was 16 and my watchword became, watch me. Every time someone gave me a challenge, I just did it. I took it on and with a vengeance because I, as a woman and as someone who's being Jewish and someone who is maybe doesn't fit the type that everybody needs to have in their life, I just had to overcome it all. And what happened in that watch me time, I became totally, I I was not vulnerable to anything. I became hardened. I became that person who was all about me. I, 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 I helped people on my time when it was convenient for me, not when it was convenient for them. Um, And I really went through all of that until I had no friends in the world. It's something that I tell in dribs and drabs. And then 
1996, I had some surgery, which left me in a wheelchair for 10 months. And man, I learned what it was like to go out there and be, I actually studied, I did the research on what it took to be a friend because, you know, when you're in a wheelchair and you need to get to a doctor, you need to get food in the house, you need to get whatever you need to get. And you have hundreds, maybe thousands of acquaintances, all, you have all their business cards, but you don't have a friend. Well, that doesn't work. So I came up with this system called jet netting and I, I didn't like the way networking was working because it was what I was about collecting the business card and just doing business. And when jet netting came about, it was about building relationships, fast, deep, long lasting, authentic, being of service, doing for others, because I learned how important that was. And you know, we all wanna give, we don't wanna take, but I had to learn to take because I then got into this other end of the spectrum with just giving all the time. And um, I came to a balance, I loved it. I started trusting people. And then I had some more zombies in my life. I don't know if you want me to go in this now or you wanna take a break. Well, let me do this. Let me let me interrupt you for a second since so you gave me permission to do that. For one thing, I can tell you that I, I'm always fascinated when I connect with people on Be Connected and their their algorithm and the way that they align us and things like that. And you were uh, recommended to me by the system very early. And I now know why. Because actually a lot of your journey up to this point, some of the challenges, not necessarily abusive childhood, but uh, I had to get myself through college, a lot of different things I can totally relate to. Uh, and your strategy around jet netting and what came out of that, and we can talk a little bit more about that in the next segment. Um, but those the zombies that you encountered along the way and the way you overcame them, uh, are very much aligned with what I have. So about getting to today, are we at today or do in terms of warrior or journey or zombie or do is there a little bit more that you can share with us to, to get to where you are today? Yeah, that, that um, 1996 surgery led me to nine other surgeries and a lifetime of, of pain. And so this is how far I can move my neck. I've gone through everything as a result of the crutches, the whole thing, and then it, and the uh, in December of 2019, and I had been so trusting. About 550 of us had um, invested in revenue-producing websites, and in that year and a half ago, um, the SEC came in and took it all. I mean, everything. We didn't know that it had not been SEC certified. Millions and millions of dollars. I lost hundreds of thousands of dollars of all the investments that I had to gather together to even make this investment. I had over 2.2 million followers on one of my sites, just like that, it all went away and I had to start over. And that's actually how I came to be connected. I wasn't working, I lost my money. I didn't wanna do anything in life. And then I just started hearing about Be Connected and it was all about what else, connecting. And the education, the whole thing just seemed perfect to me. And I always say, I didn't go after Be Connected. Be Connected found me. And it was at a time in my life where I just wanted to make new connections. I wanted to start over. And Be Connected gave me, it, it, it just gave me the gift. And when I started my show last night, it actually put me back onto what I used to do. And that was teaching and training and teaching about building relationships and diverse networks. So it came full circle and here I am loving it. Oh, wow. Well, that's a beautiful story. And in fact, um, I would say that that's not as unusual as it may sound, because I think a lot of people be connected is still a very small community. But the people that come to the community are people that come to serve. That's one of the things you're going to find across be connected. If you come to my Richardson Plano Networkers in-person networking group that now is both hybrid and in you know online and in person, you would find the same thing. So your jet netting concept and whatever is totally aligned with everything I'm about and everything I teach. So so we are very aligned there. The fact that God and again, I'm a Christian. I know you're Jewish, and but yes, we serve the same God in my mind, and so I will.
beating anybody over the head with that, but that is the reality of who I am. And I'm going to be authentic to who I am. I will say I run my life by divine appointment. So I believe that be connected not only in your life, but in my life was a divine appointment. Scott Schilling reached out to me and said, Hey, I've got this thing. He just did my podcast uh, back then in the middle of the, of the pandemic. And he said, I don't know what this, we didn't have a website. We didn't have apps. We didn't have shows. We didn't have any of the stuff that we have right now. And I said, okay, God, must be a reason I'm in. And, and so that's a beautiful thing. Well, let's do this. Let's take another quick break. And then I really want to come back and I want to hear about uh, your focus right now on children, safe drinking water, all the things that I know you're kind of, you're into and you're, are passionate about. Uh, I want to hear about why and the value you think you uniquely provide and if anything were possible what kind of impact would you like to have so we'll come we'll take another quick break we'll hear a little bit more of the song it's not the getting there from ricky jean wright and we'll be back with heshi siegel and a little more of it's Warrior not versus a race Zombie. To see how many people know your name one day you realize time was worth more than the gold It's not the getting there When you get there you'll know Funny how wisdom and you All right, and we're back. And Heshi, I gotta say, games. very few guests have rattled through as many zombies and challenges in such a short period of time as you just did. So that's uh, a credit to you and also a benefit to our audience. So if you were taking notes, you might have to slow down if you're on the audio, the, the playback a little bit and take some notes there. But she's had major challenges. But the beautiful thing is um, there's always uh, lifeboats and things and people that will show up in our lives if we keep moving forward. And Heshi has done that. So Heshi, now I want to hear a little bit about why you're doing what you're doing, the unique value you believe uh, that you provide, and if anything were possible, what kind of impact would you have? Wow, that's a lot of words spanning a lot of years. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I've, I've always had this thing for helping the underserved. I've gone into the inner cities and I've been doing this for decades. Um, but when my husband Werner, Werner Berger's also on Be Connected and he's got his own show. When we first started traveling together and we went to Peru and I saw the devastation and we went to other countries. But when we went to Africa, that kind of did it. Our first trip was in 2010 and I, I, we were going to get married at the top of Kilimanjaro. He kept telling me it was really cold and I didn't believe him. I ran out and bought I bought a, a, a leotard and some ballet slippers and, and I didn't even think about a jacket. And well, I got altitude sickness. And so the good thing about that was that while he was up on the mountain leading the group, I got to come down and spend more time with the children. I went to the hospitals and the schools and the orphanages and it was awesome for me to see how they were living and how they were dealing with things. And you know what? Even with nothing, some of them are so happy because they don't know what something is to have. But I saw children running around without any clothes on, without certainly without shoes on. And I just was, I was devastated by what I saw. Before I went, I was asked um, what I wanted to do. And I just wanted to find a village of children that I could take care of, a whole bunch of orphans. And the person I found said, well, I take care of 400 children but there are 800 in the group. And I went, oh, I can't take care of 400 when there's 800. So I'll never forget. I went from store to store and I got clothing for 800 children. doesn't matter what size they were. I just went in and I bought racks and racks of clothing. And when, the, when I got there and started distributing them, the children didn't even take the price tags off. And I'm like, well, why not? They had never seen a new piece of clothing. Everything they had was either a rag or a hand-me-down like I had. And that was my thing. I lived on hand-me-down. So of course I wanted the children to have new clothes. And, and I, at that time, the water systems weren't, they weren't even made. And when I spoke to Father Alois, who was my 
liaison. I, I said, if you could have three wishes when I come back, what would they be? And he said, well, first of all, how do I know you're coming back? And I said, when I say I'm going to do something, I do it. And water was one of those things. And so when I came back, um, I brought these, I don't know if you can see it here now. Mm. Yep. These water bottles take out everything. And so I brought, in addition to clothing and school supplies and art supplies and medical supplies, whatever, I started bringing the water bottles and I was teaching the children to stop using single use plastic because, you know, we're eating plastic in our fish now. It's, it's just amazing. So I got in tune with the life of the child there, their hardships, their whatever. And I simply wanted to help them. And that's become a cause for me. The child who has nothing or little to nothing is the child I want to help. And when I started my first nonprofit, it was all about um, character education, responsibility and learning. And, and then I thought, these children don't have food in their bellies. How am I going to teach them about character education? And then that's kind of what changed my life. And I went back and back. And um, when I go back next time, it'll be my third year teaching at the Nelson Mandela School. And I love it. If you're not careful, I will start crying because I miss the kids because I can't see them during COVID. But can you imagine 1,300 kids from Africa calling you to sing happy birthday to you? <laughs> I, I can only imagine and I can tell you that crying is okay because frankly, when I talk to people about their unique reason why God has them on the planet and I start talking myself, there's no way I can get through it without choking up. So there's, that's totally okay. And, uh, and I, I think I, I, the other thing just before, you know, I'll, I'll give it back to you, but the thing that inspired me or that uh, you were, so I, we often think, we don't realize that we're in this part of the world, in this beautiful country that we're blessed to be in, that Maslow's hierarchy of needs we're higher up on that hierarchy than most people on the planet and having hydration. I always tell people we don't, we in the United States are chronically dehydrated. And yeah. so we're not as healthy as we can be because we aren't drinking ourselves enough clean water every day. And I mean, without the toxins and everything, because we, you really need to be drinking half of your body weight in clean water every day in ounces, not half your body weight in pounds, but half your body weight in ounces. So for me, I, I need to drink about uh, 90 ounces, 95 ounces of water every day to stay hydrated. And if you can translate that into somebody who doesn't have any clean water and realize the health impact for that. So yeah, targeting and getting them the foundation of health. Uh, there's, I have people in my network that, that have the test say, your health is your greatest wealth. Well, it kind of is true. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm inspired by the fact that you were so tuned in to the audience and the needs of those children that you got down to the basics. You didn't kind of go and say, this is what would make me feel good for them to understand because they're not hearing your message because they, they're thirsty, they're, they, they, they're sick. Um, so anyway, I, I, I just, I'm, I thank you for sharing that, but go ahead. Tell us, tell us some more. There's, there's a, um, a quick story that I want to share. Um, and it has to do with kids growing up to believe that things are possible for them. One of the first times, well, the very first time I brought the water bottles, I didn't have enough of the entire orphanage. There were like 76 kids there and I did not have enough for everybody. I'm sorry, I, the phone was supposed to be off. Um, there were 76 kids there and I just started bringing the water bottles and I didn't have enough to go around. And so I had to go from the oldest down to about the kids that were 12 years old. And I had already, I'm sorry, I picked out two kids that I just fell in love with and they were below that age and I couldn't give them the water bottle. So I determined, from now on, whatever I do, I'm, there's gonna be enough for everybody because you can't go in and do something for some people and have other people just sitting there getting nothing. So that taught me the first lesson. And then the next thing I did was I tried to teach the kids about leadership. And so I took the bottle 
and I, I had them go outside to make the water even worse than what it was. And it was filled with chocolate water. I mean, water with dirt and whatever. And I held the bottle up in the front of the room and I said, okay, who's going to take a drink? And they went, Ugh. I mean, nobody wanted to take a drink. And I wasn't going to take a drink because I wanted them to do it. And I said, and I had a translator, the principal of the school and I have become really good friends. She translated. And I said, I looked at the kids and I said, you know, the people that go first win. They really win. And so I'm going to ask for one young man and one young lady to come to the front and take a drink from these bottles. And I, each of them had a bottle. And so they came to the front of the room and they drank and the kids just, it was clear water coming up from this chocolate water and they were just flabbergasted. And when I got done, I said, you know what? Leaders do go first. So the first free bottles that are gonna be given out today will be to those two children who came to the front of the room. And before I knew it, word spread throughout the entire school, 1,307 kids. So when I walked from room to room, everybody raised their hand. So they got the story. And from what I heard, the principal said from then on in, the kids really started volunteering all the time to go first. That's a beautiful thing. And, and, and I, I so love the illustration because you're talking about children who maybe had already because of their life circumstance because of where the environment they were growing up in they didn't necessarily have that inherent belief that i that i i ran a school and i can tell you that you would see in the kindergarten class or preschool class where you'd say who wants to be a fireman everybody'd raise their hand who wants to be this they'd all raise their hand because in this country our kids grow up in an environment, I don't care, you can be on the lowest rung of the ladder in this, in the United States in most cases, and all of those kids start out believing in possibilities. It's interesting because as we grow older in, in the Western society, in the blessed area that we are in, many times that goes downhill. And when you get to high school and you get to I, those high school students, how many wanna be this, how many be one, Everybody looks around, they, nobody wants to raise their hand because they don't want to take the risk. But these kids, you taught them such an important lesson that moving forward, taking that warrior initiative, if you will, with something as fundamental as being ready to drink water that you, you, they know, somebody that they trust knows is safe, is a beautiful thing. But let's do this. Um, I want to come back. And again, there's, I'm, Heshi, for one thing, I want to say, and I'll, I'll say it, we, you can say it again. I know you've got a show where you're sharing some of your life lessons and your journey uh, in a couple of hours on Be Connected, and and I'd encourage our listeners and whatever to to tune into your show. But I want to come back. I want to hear if you can distill it down to one or two or three things of what I call warrior nuggets, things that you would like the warriors listening or viewing us live here to take away from our discussion. And then I want you to then reinforce how we can stay connected to you. So let's take another quick break with Warrior vs. Zombie. We'll hear uh, a little more of Ricky Jean Wright and it's not the getting there, not the getting there. You have to say it that way if you're, uh, cause he's Americana singer songwriter. So, but, uh, and that's the way Ricky talks and that's the way his song is written. But we'll come back, we'll hear the final, what I call Land the Plane segment with Heshi Siegel and Warrior vs. Zombie. Funny how wisdom and youth are always two different games. The years flew by so fast is the common human complaint. Memories in our minds Turn to diamonds in our soul And by the grace of God All right, we're back. And Heshi, my goodness. Now from the story to what you're doing today, and I just, I, I'm so overflowing in, in hope and possibilities and ideas and, and knowing that... Uh, 
no matter what challenges that I've got in front of me, I know I can get there. But as I said before we took the break, give us a couple of couple three warrior nuggets, things that you would like to make sure that we don't miss as we're listening to this podcast. Wow. Well, don't sit still. Get out there and do it. Don't be the bystander. Be in the action. Be part of making your life and everybody else's life possible. If you have something to share, share it. Don't hold it back because if you hold it back, you could have been helping someone who needed it in just that moment. Be authentic. Do not be a carbon copy of someone else because then you're having somebody else's life. You're leading someone else's life. And your life doesn't begin until you take responsibility for being authentically you. And be vulnerable. People relate to people who are vulnerable because if you hold it all in, like I did, um, people don't see who you are. And when they don't see who you are, and that's something that I talk about all the time is likability. Um, if people can't see who you are, they're not gonna show you who they are. And there's no way that they can trust you because if you're not gonna show who you are, why bother trusting you? So those are, those are pretty much, I mean, there's a lot, but those, those are the ones that stand out for me. Well, I can't tell you how powerful those three are to me. And, and, and frankly, being in motion, that's what warriors do. We all have challenges. We have things get in our path. And there's, all, there's a million excuses for not doing something. But only your vision, your, war, your, your passion causes you to move forward and take that action. You know, a previous guest that I had, Doug Grady, said, anyway you know the thing is there's a lot of reasons why you shouldn't do things the other thing is be authentic i mean i can't be you you can't be me we can never be anybody we look at other people we put them on a pedestal we fan we, we create a fantasy around them and we believe that they're not dealing with the same things we're dealing with and then we use that as an excuse and so being authentic being real and then the last thing you said which is sometimes the most powerful is being vulnerable. Being vulnerable means that I always say life is a team sport. And the thing is, the people that want to join your team aren't just the people that want to, if they're the right people, they're the people that want to serve alongside you. And they they want to know where you they can help. They want to know what they can do to fill in the gaps. They want to know that they can be valuable as they go on the journey with you. And you've just given us that equation to be in motion, to be authentic, and to be vulnerable. And those are very, very, very powerful warrior nuggets. So thank you, Heshi. That was beautiful. So the last part of this uh, discussion is how do we stay connected to you? And I know the answers to some of that, but go ahead and tell us again. Well, you probably know the chief answer and, and that... No, there's there's actually another way, but go visit me. I mean, if we're on the show now, it means you already have access to be connected. So my show starts at uh, one o'clock central and it's all about connection. And I'm going to change it today because of the circumstances of what was going on. Um, come visit me there. Uh, you can reach out to me at Heshi Siegel at Kids Better World. And it's H-E-S-H-I-E-S-E-G-A-L because I get Hershey, I get Hishy, I get Hesse. Do not call me Hussy. It's Hesse, <laughs> which is not my given name. But Hesse Siegel at Kids Better World, Hesse Siegel at jetnettingconnection.com, right here in Be Connected. Hesse, oh, Hesse connects with a C, dot beconnected.com. That's like, that's my chief go to place and join me in the connection zone, which is up there. And um, when I say connect, this is really important. Don't connect and be a stranger. If you're going to connect, then connect and stay in touch. All right. Well, that's beautiful. And the thing is, um, you've hit some fundamentals and we are definitely going to connect for those that are watching this. As Heshi said, live, you already have access to Be Connected. If you're seeing this on one of the other platforms or listening to us, it's uh, you can find us on Be Connected. If you, it's a re 
it's referral only or invitation only. So find somebody in your in your community, your network. You can reach out to myself or you can reach out to Heshi or probably somebody is that you know is is part of Be Connected and get in the Be Connected community. It's an intentional connection with people like Heshi, like myself, like the people that are in the audience today. And we all are there to serve. And then if we benefit from it, if we serve enough, we know that we'll benefit too. But the first thing is to serve. And that's the culture, the focus, the beauty of Be Connected. So uh, with that, I'm going to say you can reach out to Heshi on Be Connected. I would encourage you to do that. If you're on Be Connected, send her a connection request right now. And I'm sure she'll respond to it and then start building a relationship. It's not just one call and get to know her because she's definitely somebody worth knowing. And Heshi, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing with our audience. I know it's going to be a blessing and I know there's so much more to share. So who knows? I may come back and ask you to do another show with me and we can talk more about some of the the uh, missions and some of the things that you have on your on your heart and we'll be back again so we'll be back back again next thursday 11 a.m central with another episode featuring another warrior on warrior versus zombie and let's hear another short snippet of the final segment of it's not the getting there with ricky gene wright and we'll be back next week with warrior versus zombie it's not the getting there it's the journey every day it's not a race to see how many people know your name one day you realize time was worth more than the gold it's not the getting there when you get there you'll know one day you realize Time was worth more than the gold It's not the getting there When you get there, you'll know